AIP stands for American Isostatic Presses. The isostatic is pressure in all directions. There's also temperature involved, so we're using high temperature, high pressure to squeeze parts. We've installed units in over 30 countries around the world, dozens in China, Korea, India, on and on and on, Malaysia, Singapore. These countries are all investing in this technology. My name is Clifford Orcutt. Um, I work for American Isostatic Presses. I'm the vice president of marketing there. We build hot isostatic presses, which is a technology for applying gas pressure to parts. Any technology that is advanced, we're in the front line of it because we're like the ultimate method of densifying parts. Um, I tell people we're high-tech blacksmith. Instead of hitting something with a hammer and densifying it, or a forge where you're using a big hydraulic ram to forge a crank in a car, we're using gas pressure. And the, the nice thing about gas pressure is it goes all around the part and it shrinks it uniformly. So it's isostatic pressure, and that way it shrinks uniformly and you get the same shape of part. It might be a little bit smaller depending on how much it densifies. Some of the benefits for jewelry applying hot isostatic pressing is number one, if you're doing a casting and it has porosity in it and you are polishing these after the fact and you don't want to hit the porosity, if you squeeze it with a hot isostatic press, it'll be 100% dense and then when you polish it, you don't have to remove as much material. Therefore, it's minimizing the amount of polishing and the amount of metal that you remove. One thing the high static pressing does is because you're taking it up to a certain temperature, the grains become more uniform, so we call it homogeneous. And so you're making a part that has very nice uniform grain structure throughout the part. That means that your polishing or your machining, everything is more uniform because you don't have variations in, in the grain structure of the metal. It's only been in the last 10 to 20 years that we've been able to lower the cost of the process and build equipment that can, can be sized properly for jewelry. We build units starting from around three inches to 60 inches in diameter. This is our standard AIP-10, which has a 150 millimeter hot zone in diameter by 300 millimeter long. You could put a lot of jewelry in here. The pressure vessel, which you see here, is cooled on the outside to keep the steel you know, from overheating. It has the electric furnace that plugs inside this pressure vessel. Basically, we're using on this one a molybdenum heating element. And the molybdenum can get to 1400 C, so you can easily handle gold or platinum. Even if you need to, these furnaces plug in like light bulbs. So you can pop this furnace out, put a carbon furnace in, and you could do ceramics, such as zirconia or lumina or so forth if you were doing ceramic jewelry. Along with this, the closure comes out and unscrews. You pull the furnace out, pull the parts out, put the new parts back in, close it back up. It takes about 15 minutes to do a changeover and start your cycle again. A typical cycle in a unit like this runs about eight hours. A couple hours to heat up, three or four hours to process the parts and a few hours to cool down. The high pressure that we get comes from an argon bottle, which is around 2,000 PSI or 150 bar. We then run it through these hydraulic compressors that give about a 30 to 1 compression ratio, and they pump us up to our 30,200 MPa pressure. We also have a cooling system that is filled with treated fluid so that it protects anything from corrosion. That is then through a heat exchanger to your outside plant tower. It's powered, this particular unit is two heating zones. So we have one on the bottom and one on the top. That gives us uniformity throughout the hot zone. So we're within a few degrees top to bottom. It uses silicon controlled rectifiers to fire the SCRs. So the voltage is controlled very tightly. That lets us control, follow our set point up and down. Um, pretty low voltage, higher amperage. We can adapt any worldwide voltage from 380 to 575, no problem. The control system has the programmable controller in it, which basically it runs a PLC program, ladder logic. All the alarms, all of the set points, all the IO are inside of the cabinet. It's connected via ethernet and 
this can be worldwide or local because it's just an ethernet connection and it's talking to an IP on the PLC. You can have thousands of recipes. You can have variations of recipes. Very simple to operate. All of the data that it's pulling in, all the thermocouples, all the bolts, amps, pressures, water flow, everything that related to the unit is going into a Excel compatible data file. So you can mine that data at any time and print it out. Again, very, very good for keeping long-term track of what you did last week or the week before. With the hip furnace, you basically have a furnace that plugs into the pressure vessel. This particular one is a Molly two-zone uh, heating element that can go to 1400C. Sometimes we'll put the parts directly in the furnace. Other times we'll put the parts into a crucible. For instance, this aluminum crucible, we might load our jewelry into this aluminum crucible. We would place it inside our furnace. We would process our cycle up to temperature and pressure, let it cool back down. We would pull our furnace parts out and we would have densified parts, castings or powder metals or whatever we ran. Very simple, very easy. Crucibles are reusable. Furnace can last thousands of cycles. The hip unit typically starts at about $175,000. It's very simple to operate. We can train non-English speaking people in a day to operate it. So very simple. We typically go and in install these equipment because there's quite a few things involved with setting it up. But once it's set up in a couple of days, we train the operator and they can easily operate it. The value to a user is, for instance, if you're doing jewelry, you'll save time on the polishing. You'll save not losing the metal that you're polishing away. You will increase the strength and the fatigue of the material because you're making it more uniform and structurally sound. So the ring now has higher strength. Sometimes that'll allow you to use thinner parts and still get the same strength. You could do various things. You can run 10 parts, you could run 20 parts, or you could get a big equipment and run a thousand parts. Um, just depends on cost versus performance and size and what you're trying to accomplish. A new machine is about a six month lead time. If a person wants to start making parts prior to delivery of the machine, we have that capability too. We can run parts at our facility for them. We currently have multiple jewelry shops using this machine. They're shops that are casting platinum. They're using it for densifying the porosity that's in those rings. We also have 3D printing jewelry companies that are using it to densify their products. One of the aspects of HIP, it is an expensive process, but it's only expensive compared to what you're applying it to. So jewelry, for instance, is very high dollars per small parts. So if you're adding $20 to a $10,000 ring, that's a minimal cost compared to adding $20 to a $5 gear in a car. Also, because jewelry is typically small parts, you can process many 20 to 100 rings in a very small hip unit. So most of the jewelry, you know, there's a certain size limit. The economics are there for jewelry. Within the next year, we're hoping to have a smaller hip unit that's available at 50% of the cost, available for mom and pop jewelers that have smaller production needs. The big success that we see is jewelers that have purchased one machine from us are buying additional machines. And that tells us that they are being profitable, the economics are there, and they're scaling up. We see that happening in numerous locations. That's very exciting. We also see our unit being adapted to not only the metallurgy again, but some of the stones are being hipped. Uh, I won't go into that. We have some NDAs with different companies, but uh, there's some improvements that our process can do on the actual stones, and that's another new application. There is a group called the International HIP Committee. We put on a conference every three years. It's well attended by Russia, China, India. Many people come to it. The next one will be in September of 2022 and it'll be held in Columbus, Ohio, USA.